Hello and welcome back to one more episode of Quantum Tutorials. In the previous episode, we looked at how to implement post processor in the fabric layer using JavaScript programming language. In this episode, we are going to look at how to implement the post processor using Java programming language with an example inside the fabric layer. Let us look at how we can implement the same post processor using Java programming language. I am using Eclipse IDE for writing my post processor. I just created a simple Java project inside the Eclipse IDE and to be able to compile my post processor or preprocessor while writing the code inside the Eclipse IDE, I will be using the APIs and libraries to access the result object, to access the data set inside the result object, parameters inside the result object, records inside the result object, right. So, I should be having the reference to those libraries which are available inside the fabric layer. So, the main library or the jar file which we want to use is this middleware-api.jar file. Now, where do I get this middleware-api.jar file and how do I add it to my Eclipse project? Let us look at that. From your fabric console, if you access the runtime environment, in the app services console, you will be able to see this option downloads. If you access this downloads, all the libraries that are available inside the fabric layer are listed down here, which means we can download any of these libraries and place it as part of our Java code which we are implementing. And we will be able to use the APIs inside these libraries inside the Java code that we are implementing. And we can package our Java code excluding this library and we can put the Java code as part of the fabric layer. When our Java code executes within the fabric layer, it will automatically refer to the libraries which are already available inside the fabric layer. Let us see how to do this. So, we want this middleware API jar file. So, using this option, we will be able to download this middleware API jar file and I will be doing some logging inside my post processor and pre processor. So, I want to use the same log4j library which is used within fabric for doing logging from my pre-processor and post-processor. So, I am also downloading this log4j library. So, once I have downloaded these two jar files, inside my Eclipse project, I created a folder as lib and I placed these two jar files inside the lib folder of my project. And then I have to add these two jar files to the build path of this Java project. So I went to the properties of the Java project and access the Java build path and under libraries in the class path by using this add jars option, I will be able to add both these jar files which are part of the library of my project into the build path of my Java project. So, that is how I added these two jar files to the build path of my Java project. If there are any other libraries that we want to use, so we can download them from the app services console of fabric and include them as part of your processors project build path. Click on apply and close. So, now the required jar files are also available within the project. 
to be able to create a post processor we'll have to create a class a simple java class and the java class will be implementing the interface data post processor 2 let me show just quickly how to create a java class implementing this data post processor 2 you create a new java class let's say let's give the name of the java class as my post processor and in the interfaces section i click on add And if I search for data post processor 2, I will be able to find this interface which is part of middleware API jar file if you see here. So I select that data post processor 2 and I click on add, ok and here you will be able to see that the interface got added. So when I create this class my post processor 2, if I click on finish now. So my post processor to Java class got created. It is implementing this interface data post processor 2. And this interface is present as part of the middleware API jar file that we have added. So we are essentially creating a simple Java class and we are making it work as a post processor by implementing this data post processor 2 interface. And whenever we implement an interface, we have to give the definition for the functions which are there inside that inter interface. In this data post processor 2, we have this function execute which we have to override as part of our post processor. So let's see how to do that. So inside this post processor that we have created by implementing this data post processor 2 interface, we are overriding this execute method. Let's inspect what is the inputs that we are getting for this execute method. Similar to the post processor which we have implemented using JavaScript, where the result object is available for us inside the JavaScript function. Here, the result object inside the Java code is given as an input parameter to this execute method and this data controller request object and the data controller response object these are wrappers on top of http request and http response objects so if you want to access anything from the http request object or http response object like the request parameter the session session attributes request attributes all these activities you can do by using this data controller request object and data controller response object. So now let us look at how we are processing this result object and creating new data sets inside the result object from the Java code. The same logic which we have implemented from the JavaScript post processor we are going to do the same thing as part of the Java post processor. As you can see here, we are creating the body data set by reading it from the result object that is available as part of the input parameter. We are using the same API get data set by ID that we have used as part of our We are using this API that get data set by ID and passing the ID of the data set in this case body and we are reading the data set from the result object and here we are creating the data sets, the new data sets. At this point of time, at this stage in the code, we just defined these data sets. All the savings accounts, current accounts, personal loan accounts, all these data sets are created and are empty at this stage of code. 
from the body data set that we have read from the result object, we are finding out the length of the number of records present inside the body data set. And further in the code, we are iterating over each record that is present inside the body data set. And we are reading each record and processing the record. Essentially, we are finding out the value of the product name parameter present inside the record with this line of code. We are reading the value of the parameter product name by using this get parameter of product name and get value. Once we have the value of this product name parameter in each record, we are using that value and verifying whether it's a saving account record or whether it's a current account record further like that. And appropriately adding that record inside the array list. So here we have created the array lists representing each type of records, the group. And while iterating over each record, we are adding that record based on the product type into that specific array list. And once we have completed iterating over all the records inside the body data set, we are adding these array lists into the data sets that we have newly created here. So how are we adding these array lists into each of these data sets? Like this. So using the data set reference, by using this add all records, we are passing the array list of records and we are adding that array list to the data set. So for each data set, we are adding the array list of records into that specific data set. And once these data sets are updated with the specific values, the data sets are further being added into the result object. By using this result.add data set, we are adding each of these new data sets into the result object. By now, the result object is updated with the new set of data sets inside it. And finally, we are returning the updated result object from the execute method of the post processor. So every post processor should return a result object from the execute method that is overridden inside the post processor Java class. So now how do we attach this post processor to the integration service operation? We'll have to create a jar file out of our processor's Java code. Let us export, right click on the Java project and click on export. And I want to export this as a jar file. So under Java, I select the jar file, click on next. And I want to only include the source. I don't want to include the lib because the two jar files which we are having as part of the lib, they are already present as part of the fabric environment. We downloaded those two jar files from the fabric environment and we used them as part of this processor's Java code only to be able to compile the Java code in the Eclipse IDE. So we need not have to package these libraries, only the source code that we have newly created is what we are packaging as part of our jar file. I'm giving the name of the jar file as processors. You can give any name for your jar file. I'm creating the jar file on my desktop and click on finish. We are accessing the operation inside the integration service to which we want to attach these processors. So before we can attach the processors to the operation level, at the service level, we'll have to use this advanced option and upload the jar file into the fabric environment. 
So currently the jar file is on the desktop. I'll click on this upload new option under the advanced section of my service. And I'll select the jar file which is there on the desktop and click on open. So the jar file got uploaded and the processor's jar file is linked to the integration service. So you can see that it is linked here. If you want to unlink it, just click on this link option and the jar file will be unlinked from this integration service. The jar file would still be present as part of the fabric environment, but it is not linked to the integration service. So once you have uploaded the jar file and the jar file is linked to the integration service, Click on save. Close any of the operations that are already opened here, like in this case, get customer holdings and reopen that operation. Once you have reopened the operation in the advanced tab, so now we want to define the post processor using the Java code. So instead of selecting JavaScript, I am selecting Java. And in this drop down, if I select the drop down, I will be able to see all the classes that are available inside the processor's jar file, which we have attached to the service level. So Fabric is able to recognize the jar file and it is showing all the classes that are available inside those jar file. I can select the class which I want to use as a post processor. So once I have selected it, the class is listed down here, which means for this specific integration service operation, we have linked this class to act as a post processor. So you can click on save and fetch response. Yeah. So as you can see here, we received the response back from the backend layer into the fabric layer and the java post processor got executed and it converted the response that we got from the backend system by adding the new data sets into the result object so this is how we will be able to implement a post processor either by using javascript or by using java programming language and we can process the response or the result which we have received from the backend system into the fabric layer before sending the result to the frontend application.